Well, there you go. If you can't see, you wouldn't even know that there's a bunch of pilchards right by the launch. Pilchards, pilchards. Huh, check this out. I saw the uh, silver look of a fish, little fish. And then now it's going by, it looks like it's breathing. It's a pilchard, it's a big pilchard. And I can see the mouth puckering. So it is alive even though it's sitting on top of that seaweed. <laughs> it must have jumped on top of these pads and can't get down into it. Look at that. He's breathing. Yeah, he's totally alive. Alright, relax. Oh, see, he got a cuda tacked him. There you go. Now show me where your family is. Well, there you go. You save a life, you get rewarded. Someone's bobber. It's a tarpon bobber. That'll work though. Still good. Got the plastic straw still. Score! I see the tarpons. There we go, right there. I see you guys. I don't see a tail underneath there. They are there. There's about six or seven of them sticking their nose out right there. They're just all facing this direction into the current. I see you guys. I've taken the Sight Fishing 101 course. All oh, the snappers in there. Oh yeah. And I see bigger pilchards. Not a lot there. I'll see if there's a bigger school. Oh, there's more. No, that's the same school. No, there's some there. Yeah, there's a decent amount along here. I'm going to see if there's a bigger pocket over there, though. I don't know. Yeah, we got some. Looks like some decent sized ones. Yeah, there's some good ones in there. Nice. Oh, there's some nice chunkers in there. If you can see the bait, you can catch the bait. Hey everybody, how we doing today? So welcome to Sight Fishing 101, part two system requirements so if you're interested in getting into the sight fishing game there's a few key characteristics that you just basically have to have or evolve into otherwise it's just really not worthwhile because doing it a little bit is just truly ineffective you either going to do it or you're not so let's get into it system requirement number one your vision so basically, if you have any issues in regards to your visibility, specifically with your far-sighted part, um, if you could read a book easily, but you can't see distance, that's a problem. All right, if you could see distance, but you can't read a book real close, that's not so much of an issue, but you have to have good vision to start with. Uh, if you're coming down to the Keys, especially if you're hiding a, hiring a guide to take you out, do some sight fishing, especially like flats fishing, uh, if your visibility isn't up to par, you're basically just throwing the money away. So perfect time to bite the bullet, go see your optometrist, get your eyes checked out, get glasses, get contacts, do LASIK surgery, do whatever it takes to get it fixed because fishing is important. So it's one of those things that you should have the, the correct tools and that vision part of it is huge. So number one, get the eyes fixed. System requirement number two, polarized lens sunglasses. All right, um, these are Costa Del Mar's. I paid around $150 for them. However, I have some $7 polarized sunglasses that I use for my daily drivers. I actually think I have four or five pairs because they're just cheap, but they're super effective. Uh, if I forget and don't grab these uh, expensive glasses and I just have my daily driver cheapies, it doesn't bother me a bit. I don't even think twice about it, okay? 
just need to be polarized lenses. An uh, easy way to tell is uh, if you take your glasses, look at them away from your face, and then uh, look at your cell phone or computer screen, and then just turn them 90 degrees. Uh, if it darkens up, and then as you turn them back, it goes back to that clear again with just a light tint. Those are polarized, you'll generally be good. Um, like I said, uh, these glasses, 150 originally, scratched up the original lenses, put in some $40 aftermarket replacements, work fine. $7 cheapies, work fine. Uh, take a look at the color spectrums out there. There's charts for depending on the type of fishing water conditions. So I use amber, uh, gold, light brown for the flats, shallow water stuff, high glare in the keys, clear water. Uh, if you go offshore, you're going to want the darker smokes, the uh, darker blues, okay? And then even they say like having these mirrorized helps out a bit, especially with the, the harsher glare. So polarized glasses, it's a must. They, what they basically do is they cut the glare on the surface of the water, allowing you to visually penetrate into the water there. And that's what they do. Number three system requirement, a hat some sort of hat to give you extra coverage from that sun there. I always recommend my fishing style hats. It's a 360 brow here. Uh, I've got the neck flap for that sun protection as well. But the key thing you want is, yes, the, the sunglasses are there to block those sun rays and allow you to see into the water. But when you have the brow of the uh, hat covering the sunglasses, taking away that direct sunlight off of your lenses, it reduces that glare even more. So very important. Uh, something flexible. Um, the wraparound's important. So if I'm looking straight, if you just have a baseball cap, that's great. But then when you're looking over here at something, that sunlight goes right to the side where there's no brow there, past the sunglasses because they're not right up against your face and you get glare and reflections and then you lose that visibility so very good to have a good solid sun hat to give that extra glare protection system requirement number four your height all right i don't mean you're how tall you are i mean the ability to get tall get high uh if you're on a kayak it means standing if you're on a flat sport it means be able to stand being able to get on the platform casting platform or on the polling platform. Same thing with the bay boat, offshore boat. The ability to stand. You gotta be able to get that angle so that you can penetrate that glare and see more, okay, deeper into that water. The higher though you are, the farther that you can see, and that's more effective of not scaring away the fish. So I'm gonna do a little quick example here so you can kind of get the gist of what I'm talking about. All right, so here's a good example. This is perfect sun condition, sun coming over my back and i'm sitting down and then as i rotate here start going the sun side and then that visibility gets cut by that glare and my ability to see drops considerably so my ability to see is probably not more than 10 feet on this side okay and it'll get better as you're going around versus where i can probably see double that probably 20 plus feet there about halfway to the uh, mangroves and that's at a sitting position all right, here I am standing now, bam. And my visibility is I could see into those sweet spots right along the edges of the mangroves. I can't really see under the mangroves, but I could see to the shadow edges. And a lot of time that's good, but we got good visibility. Okay, we start getting the glare side and it gets harder, but I would still say I could see 20 feet. So double what I could see when I'm sitting down, just even on this glare sun side. All right, weeds aren't helping, but it's keeping me out of the wind. So that's kind of why I'm here. But uh, yeah, my visibility is pretty good. Uh, I could see to that tree over there, probably 40 foot uh, without a problem. And I'd be able to spot a tarpon redfish snook just because I could stand here where I could do a third of that if I'm sitting. All right, so let's say you're on a flats boat. You're on a little bit raised platform to start with and you get on the casting platform. Here's basically your visibility and what you can see. Definitely you can see better there, you can see farther. Cut down into the glare areas and see even clearer and you get distance. So that's basically flats boat on a platform.
Next height will be if you're on a flats boat, but you're on the polling platform, the one that's on the back of the boat. You're basically the guide position and you're roughly going to be up in this position. And this is what you can see. Tons more visibility. You're basically looking straight down from uh, your, when we were in the sitting position. So you can see right through that water there. You got a lot more length and you have a lot more clarity. And what also it does is it allows you to be farther away from the fish which means you're gonna get less chance at spooking them. And plus you're gonna see them earlier before they see you, which is gonna allow you to sneak up on them, get the boat in the best position, take your time, be able to get your cast in the right spot. It's just a lot much better, so get taller. The next requirement I'll be actually doing a, a little in-depth uh, video about later, but uh, the next requirement is the sun and the wind all right uh these will in varying degrees make things easier and harder the less you have so today we've got some bluebird skies which is great creating some great visibility uh, especially over my shoulder however if it was straight up it would be even better the ultimate probably being one o'clock two o'clock position over your back looking into the direction that you want to see the fish there that would be the the primo option there however it's not always like that as that sun goes down you get more of a glare angle and it becomes harder and harder to see into those depths there uh, same thing as when there's cloudy and there is no sun uh, it creates an even haze over the water and very difficult to see so more sun the better but then as you become more experienced and you learn the ability to see specific items even when they're not so distinct uh, you'll get better at it wind same situation flatter calm the better uh, the reason why i'm not filming it out there because you can see how ripply it is and all those ripples makes the glare kind of flash up and it really breaks things up you can't see patterns makes things very difficult but then you come over here where we're basically on the leeward side of the wind uh, and you can see how clear it is because there's no ripples right here so less winds the better uh, when you're starting out i would say uh, five knots or less is premium uh, 10 knots it, you're pushing it however you can get away with it if you're moving in along these uh, leeward sides of these islands and stay in close and you'll find these flat water positions there but uh, getting that sun, getting that wind correct for that side fishing makes a huge difference. Look at all the tarpons. Look at all the tarpon. Side fishing 101, working. Wish I would have seen them a lot earlier. Look at all these guys. There they are, hanging out here. In the weeds. That's why I couldn't see them very well. Definitely wouldn't saw them if I was sitting down. You ain't up, you ain't seen them. All right, I see them up there. I see them, I see them up there. Don't want to spook them. Let's use the tall camera to see them. All right, so I can see him standing. Uh, see if you can see him out there. Yep, they're still way up there. And that's how much visibility that I would have seen them way earlier if I was on a polling platform. I'm just a little lucky I knew they were coming up and uh, yeah, there's a whole school of them. Probably about 15 or 20 of them laid out there. All right, I can see them over there. Well, there's a shark there, but I see them swimming around up there. Let them stay happy. Yep, they're all in that pool over there now. So standing up, I mean, I could see all the way to the mangroves from here. 
got the right light conditions got the eyes got the polarized lenses all right i've got a polarized lens on the gopro now see if you can see any better with it we're looking for those tarpon going to be going into the glare here so it'd be good to be able to spot them a little earlier oh i see bait flashing in there so there's tons of uh little glass minnows whole schools of them in there that's what those tarpon around always a reason Oh, right there. I saw one roll. All right. You can see the rings there. That's where it rolled. Let's see if we can get these guys happy here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Don't need polarized lenses for that. Can't see them though. I see some tarpon. See, um, checking it out. Not sure what to do. They're like Oh, they're coming out. They're looking for food. They want to be fed. All oh, those snappers are going after them. We're all back over there now. Oh, that's a snook. That one's a snook. Cuda, snappers, and tarpon. We're back over there. All right, so that is Sight Fishing 101 Part 2, System Requirements. Um, pretty much cut and dry. You're either doing it or you're not. Um, if you're not, uh, you might as well just save your time, pick a different style of fishing because uh, sight fishing is just not going to be very effective. Um, specifically, the first two, one being vision. Uh, don't kid yourself. Um, it's only affecting you. All right. Uh, if you have any vision impairment, go get it fixed. Go get glasses, contacts, Lasix. Um, just get it so you can see when you're fishing and put them away the rest of your life. It won't matter. But if you're wanting to do the sight fishing, you have to be able to see. Okay. No if, ands, or but about it. Uh, especially if you're going to come down here and hire a guide. Uh, the guide's going to know first fish, okay? Basically, it's going to work. He's going to see a fish. He's going to say, hey, uh, 1 o'clock, 40 feet out. You got it? And you're going to say, oh, nope. And he's going to, okay, he's going to bring his push pull around, point at it, say, okay, you got it? And you say, oh, nope, don't see it. Say, okay, point your rod out there, okay? A little bit to the right, right, down. Okay, right there. You see it? And you're like, uh, nope. 
and then he's just like a light switch gonna be all right so we're out sight fishing and this person can't see great but then he's gonna remember well they just gave me a thousand dollars so I'll play no worries all right great job angler we're doing good beautiful day out here let's keep on going all right and that's gonna be your experience all right so uh, if you've got vision stuff just get it fixed okay if you're not Different style of fishing is probably better off for you. All right, the other second one is standing, okay? If you're sitting, okay, wasting your time. Pick a different style of fishing. 95% of the fish I catch, 95% of what you see me catching on my YouTube videos, I am standing, okay? Hugely important, okay? I can't emphasize enough, all right? Get off your butt if you're not if you're on a kayak or paddleboard or a little skiff and you're kind of uh, antsy about it, practice. Get out there. Get on that water. Practice. Put the leave the fishing poles at home. Get out there. Practice your uh, standing there. Um, if you need to get the outrigger, stabilize whatever you got. 95% of the fish I catch, I catch while I'm standing. All right. If you're sitting, you're wasting your time. All right. So hopefully you kind of see how important this stuff is. Um, overall, I would say about 75% of the fish I catch that you see on the YouTube, I am sight fishing, I am seeing that fish, I am figuring out which direction they are, where I should place that bait, I'm putting that bait there, I'm watching that fish come up to it, I'm watching them open their mouth, I'm watching that bait go in their mouth, and then I'm setting that hook okay and it's a very effective way of catching fish now you have to remember the florida keys one of our aspects that we have is water clarity and you could either take that as a huge advantage and utilize the sight fishing or you can leave it to the side and you're going to be like i was the first time i fished out here out in the middle of the ocean 120 110 miles from shore looking out into just water and not seeing anything different on this direction or that direction and you're just gonna gamble that hopefully a fish will randomly be where you cast your lure or your bait, okay? And you're just basically fishing for luck and that is not very effective. So sight fishing, very important. Uh, hopefully you found the video uh, educational. Um, but uh, anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.